Hope I'm getting stereo. Am I getting stereo? We'll find out, right? Right now. With the stereo test. What the hell did I do with that pick? That was a good pick. Don't you hate it when you get a pick? I'm just going to start off talking since no one wants to hear me effing play. My last video got like 30, 30 views. 30 something views. Ah, what am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to post every mother effing Randy Rhodes bootleg I have, which is hundreds. Hundreds. There's a guy. We all know him. We don't all know him. But if you're local to California, where that's where I am now, uh, he's had a, this tribute band, Rhodes Tribute Band, not an Aussie tribute. There's no reason to tr have a tribute band to a guy that's ridden on the backs of other people to get his fame. He's never written a song in his life. He's come up with melodies, which is important. But he's never written lyrics, never written music, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All lies he told about him and Randy sitting down and writing. Now, Randy would sit and listen to the idiot babble on about ideas, but Randy would just go ahead and proceed with what he had, and Ozzy would go, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah, but mainly yes. He was a bumbling drunk. The first time uh, he flew his mom out, and his mom was sitting there waiting to meet Ozzy. And Ozzy was passed out drunk on the couch. And she sat down next to the... Figuring him he's a roadie or some, you know, loser. That's just, you know, working for the band. And she's like, well, when do I get to meet Ozzy? And he's like, Mom, that's him sleeping on the couch. She goes, that's him? <laughs> yes. That's the scumbag that's going to... Give you a taste of stardom, and then by the complete carelessness of Sharon and her whole family, they're all to blame, they let this idiot that was suicidal, and they knew it, and the guy had the bus, the bus driver had his wife on the bus the day of the crash. This is not all brought out, and it's all, it's not brought out for a reason, because... It could be opened up. The investigation could be opened up again. But Sharon really doesn't want to lose any money over this. Especially since it's old news and Randy died so long ago. And they've already gotten their millions and millions that they're going to ever get off them. They could care less. So the whole thing is, is they knew. And some of the band members knew this guy. Because he was a regular on the circuit. There's... When you tour, and not that I did a lot of touring in buses, that and it wasn't a tour. It was like, we're going to take you from here to here, and then you're on your own. But uh, they all have a, like a thing, like this bus driver is real cool, never gets tickets, he'll get you there on time, da 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 da, -da. This guy's a freak, watch out, he takes drugs, he'll take drugs to get you there. If he gets you there in one piece. Or this guy is just a complete mess. Stay away from him. He's got bad vibes. That's what they thought of a cock. Because he's a cock. So. Why am I getting started on this? Oh. Because of the whole Randy Rose thing. I always get caught up in it. Because. I guess because. Just because. I, I knew him. And. Uh, you know. People want to know about him, but it seems like the Randy Rhodes community is very small. I mean, for crying out loud, I've had that video on there for months now, and it's only got like 8,000 views. Really? You would think it would have more. It's the highest quality soundboard recording out there. Period. And I have every single bootleg ever and I've got and Jeff found out this when he came over found this out I've got a lot that nobody has because people just give them to me they're like oh you knew him here dude you know or whatever or I'll say hey you know I was in the rain oh really I got this have it thanks 
And that's from, you know, my teens till now. My teen age years till now. And my first wife, my first girl, little, you know, my first girlfriend, that'd be sad. My first wife who turned it and my, uh, my first, oh, for crap. My girlfriend that turned into my first wife, she was very young. I met her when I, as soon as I graduated. I knew her before then, but, uh, anyways, long story short, she was a big Randy Rhodes fan. So she would get stuff for me, like the picture she got from the school files. Gave it to me. How nice of her. And I was trying to keep her sheltered from all the crap storm because I found out that Randy Rhodes fanatics tend to turn on you. You don't know if they're going to be happy that you have something or mad because it's jealous, I guess. I don't know. So that's why I kind of steer clear of those things because they're out of control. I just like, to me, he makes me happy. He brings back good memories. It's sad to think of what happened, so I don't. I don't think about it. I don't think about the crash and what could have been. Why? Why dwell on stuff like that that's stupid? I try to think about the positive. What did he leave us? What What was he getting to those last few months when he was building his new sound and he had his guitars and we were still playing them today. I'm not playing. I was going to pull out the uh, Black Jackson, but it's it's too far buried. And I don't have that much time. But, uh, so I pulled out the SG Pirate knockoff. Because I have the, uh, one, the, you know, Johnny Depp thing. I don't like Johnny Depp. And this guy started making uh, these knockoffs. With, you know, a little relic, not relic, but, is it relicking? Yeah. And he's got, like, little wormholes, and he drew on it, and I spiced it up with a few things, like the little things in his eyes, little diamonds and this, and then I had a real pickup, because he had a fake whatever put in, so I had this mounted, and sounds good. And I picked it, Epiphone, because I'm watching this Tom Petty uh, concert from a few years ago. Oh, obviously, so he's dead. And that's sad, too, because, man, that guy was a part of my whole life. You know, it wasn't metal, but I went to see him, uh, I don't know when. It was a long time ago, late 80s. And I'm like, wow, this guy's friggin' good. Really good. Great songwriter. He's got his own voice. At first, I didn't like it, but now I, I get it. I understand it. He was really, he was a very talented, gifted musician and songwriter. I'm watching him now. He's playing a Reckenbacher, and so is his guitar player. But his guitar player had been playing a Les Paul, Ju an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. most of the concert. A lot of people play Epiphones. I'm telling you right now, and you can believe me or not, a lot of guys will play their Epiphone signatures, but they'll have a Gibson on there. Because Gibson wants Gibson to push Gibson, not Epiphone. They want their Gibson line to... But no one's buying the Gibson crap. Some people are. There's that Trogly guy, Troglodyte. He's a... Uh, Gibson guy, I guess he's buying them, but I just, I'm not buying guitars anymore, as if you haven't noticed, and you have, I'm just having my one last custom build, built right now, it's uh, Ice Roads, that should tell you all right there what it's going to be, the Ice Roads, Iceman Roads, half Iceman, half Rainy Roads, it's going to be bitching, bitching, that's it. And then I'm selling off my overstock, getting it trimmed down to about 50, 40, 50 guitars, and then just stick with that. Because I don't need 100 something. Get Why? Who needs that many? Or 200 or whatever it is. See, I lose track because I, I gave some to my cousin to hold on to. He, had, he moved 
back east, so I had to take all those back, and I'm like, holy crap, I got a lot of guitars. But I got a friend in Utah that's holding on to them, my son in Utah that's holding on to a bunch of them, another cousin, and another place. And then wherever I go, so. But they're never all in one place, and not all of the really uh, expensive ones are. Is this enough talking for you? I'm done with the trick-or-treat, Mandy Lion crap, because... Apparently, no one wants to talk about it. I don't really want to talk about it. I want to save it for the documentary because it's going to be in there. It's probably going to piss him off. That's why I keep giving this olive branch to him. Uh, you know, dude, it's cool. But if you're going to be in my documentary, you've got to tell the truth. And the truth will set you free. <laughs> wow, how corny is that? Woo! pickups can get it the marzio man and this is a what do you call it that big one invader this is a fake invader mounted to the body it's not doing anything now so i got a real invader in there and it sounds <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
songs that Randy did teach me when I first started, when I switched from Joe, Larry, to Randy, because Joe couldn't teach him. He kind of taught me, tried to teach me Sabbath. Bloody Sabbath. I mean, that's bar chords. But the other one, I wanted to learn, but uh, it was genocide. 
Judas Priest, and I can't remember how it goes. Oh. taught me the correct way which is I'm like whoa I can't play that you know I'm 14 I think I was about 14 78 79 so it's 78 it's not yeah because 79 he was still here and then he left late 70 I've got to figure this out the exact dates because people keep asking but you know it was towards the end of my, no, it was toward the, I was friends with Brent, guy, the kid's name was Brent Beveridge. He was my friend in junior high school. High school, he kind of geeked out and went all soch on me, and I was into rock and roll, man. I was a rocker, I'm wearing Motley Crue shirts, Scorpions, Judas Priest. No one knew who's the Scorpions. Molly Crew was just who they a punk band, and I would you know had my hair dyed and sticking up and makeup going to school, and I never had to participate in PE because I didn't want my makeup to run. I'm like, look at it takes me an hour and a half to look like this. I would go to school full on like I was getting the re getting ready to hit the stage, all through my 11th and 12th grade, and sometimes my pants were so from tight. I remember one time I got these Jordash jeans. No, they were not jeans. They were the, uh, what's well, not the Jordash, but the other one that everybody had bought in the 80s. And they were kind of like cor corduroy, but not corduroy. All I remember is they were kind of corduroy type, fancy, very expensive, but I was able to heist them. <laughs> And I got those, and I wore them to school on Monday. I got them Saturday. I tried to fit into them. I, I could do it. I just got to suck my, you know. There's really nothing to suck in because I was pretty skinny. But I got them on, and I was like three classes in. And this girl stops me and says, <laughs> she's like, are you hiding a sock? I'm like, Where? I'm wearing socks. She goes, you don't get it. I go, No. Not really. And she points to... I go, there's no sock in there. And she goes, nice. I'm like, hmm. Is it worth the pain? <laughs> so I went through two more classes, or class until I got to lunch, and then I got someone to drive me home, and I switched pants. But hey, that was like... That was cool. And she was, you know and a group of real hot chicks. But I wasn't into girls at my school. There was a bunch that were into me, and they said so when they wrote in my uh, yearbook. But I had girlfriends outside of my school, so if when it come time to dump them, they're dumped, and I don't have to see them at school. Same thing with 
You learn that at school, and you learn that at work. Never fish off the company pier, because it will bite you in the butt every time. It did me twice. <laughs> Two. Two or three times. And don't party with your fellow employees or whatever. Like, dude, we're all getting together, and if there's a girl there, and that girl, you know that girl kind of likes you, whatever. No. Bad idea. Bad idea. Take it from me. This is out of the whole rock and roll thing, and I thought, well, I'm done with all that. No, it continued. Until I, you know, stopped it. When I went back to church. <laughs> really, that's it. That's enough for me. <laughs> and yes, I do have a girlfriend for all those other people that are asking. I'm just keeping it low. Because I don't want to be pressured into marriage again. Really don't. I mean, I doubt I'm going to be married again. I've been married enough. And I've got kids. I re I've reproduced. I've been married multiple times. I don't need to do it again. I'm not one of those guys anymore. I'm, I mean, when I was a kid, I really wanted a girl all the time. But I'm not a kid anymore. And I really don't need a girl to make me feel like I'm complete. I don't. I know that's, you think whatever you want, but uh, I'm kind of done with it, but uh, there's a girl that I'm, I'm going, I'm dating, I've been dating her for a few months, actually, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know what to talk about to you guys. The guy, so the guy that's working on the documentary, I talked to the other guy that was going to, but he's so stoned and immaculate that he'll never I don't know what I keep offering because it seems like he's talented but he's just too out of it he can't get stuff together he's like well I'm really you know I'm school well school shouldn't take up your entire flipping life especially if you're getting a masters in some film crap which is not going to help you and the only reason he doesn't know that is because he's from West Virginia People from out of state think you need to go to school, and then when you come to Hollywood, they're going to hire you because you have a master's in film or a master's in whatever. It does not help you. You're, e you're either talented and you can do it, or you can't. I got in to my job. Zero. I just went from music to that. They said, can you do this? Yes, I can. And I learned. Simple. Anyways, we'll save all this for the... We're just trying to figure out how to end the uh, documentary. Should we end it with the crash 10 years ago? Should we end it here now? See, this is the trouble: is we're, we don't know how to end it because we've gotten this far. We've put together everything up till now, and should we end it like Motley Crue did? And we went on to play for twenty more years, and he went on to a but da 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 da. I think I think that's what I want to do because you know the story isn't over can't really end it so you got to end it in the past kind of and then let the story tell itself out like a part two they're already thinking about a part two Motley Crue is surprise surprise I told you when I saw it it was over two and a half hours long and then when it came out it was in like an hour and a half or hour or something can't remember now all right that's it I'm done talking to you fruitcakes <laughs> Subscribe and comment or I'm going to come there and find you and make you do it. I'm not doing this because I like to. I'm doing, I mean, begging for this. 
I'm doing it because I, the YouTube is getting ready to everybody with under a thousand subscribers. Get it? Got it? Good? Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>